integrate e to the x times the sine of x solution. So this is a pretty famous uh, integral. So let's do it. So we'll start by calling this i. And the trick is to use integration by parts two times. So recall the integration by parts formula. It says if you have the integral of u dv, that's equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So in this case, we get to pick whatever we want. We can actually let u be e to the x, or we can let u be sine x. Um, I personally like to differentiate trig functions rather than integrate them. I think it's easier. So uh, I'll let u be sine x. So first, I'll rewrite what I have over here. So i is equal to the integral of e to the x sine x dx. And we said we would let u uh, be the trig function. So u is sine x. That means that dv is what's left over. So it's e to the x dx. So now we'll compute du. So du is equal to cosine x dx. And when you integrate dv, you just get v. So v is equal to e to the x. All right, good stuff. So now we'll use the parts formula. I'm going to write it again um, above here so you see exactly how it's being used. So we have u dv, and that's equal to the uv, rather, minus the integral of v du. All right, so uv. uv is e to the x uh, sine x. So it's e to the x sine x minus the integral of v du. So minus e to the x cosine x dx. All right, so now we'll do parts again, right? Uh, many people like to use uh, different variables when they use parts more than once. Um, I don't do that. Um, I like to be abusive. <laughs> Let's just use the same variable. Uh, right? Use a dummy variable. We've already used it. We've already got what we wanted out of it. So let's go ahead and use it again. So u is equal to cosine x. And then du in this case is negative sine x dx. And then again, dv is what's left over. So it's equal to e to the x dx. Now, a word of warning in these problems, uh, once you let u be the trig function, make sure you continue to do that throughout the problem. Um, if you let u be sine x, and then here you let it be e to the x in the second piece, it won't work. So either stick with the trig function or stick with the exponential. And then v here is e to the x. All right, let's go ahead and do the parts again. So I'm going to come down here and rewrite what we have. So we have i is equal to, so we have e to the x sine x. And then minus, and then I'm going to put a bracket here. So now we're using parts on this piece here. So it's uv, so that's e to the x cosine x, minus the integral of v du. But there's already a minus here, so it's going to be plus e to the x sine x. Oh, and this is beautiful. No matter how many times I, I do this problem, um, this is really cool. This here is your i, right? That's what we started with, right? That's the original integral. So we have i equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. And then distributing the negative 1, we have minus i, minus i. So now we can add i to both sides, right? So add i, because we're looking for i. i is the original integral, so plus i plus i. So we have 2i equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. Then divide by 2. And you can pull out the 2 if you want. So therefore, this is equal to i equals, I'll, I'll pull it out, 1 half. Uh, you can pull out the e to the x also. I won't. Um, e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. And then we just have that plus c. That's our arbitrary constant of integration. And that's it. I hope this video has made sense, and I hope it's been helpful to someone out there in the world who is working on integration. That's it.